Is this a private altercation? Or do you allow spectators? Get the fuck back in your car, old man. Please, don't let me interrupt. Watch if you get a knife. So have I. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, man. and runs away lives to fight another day but it's usually best to face one's destiny don't you agree he was destined for the olympics there's not one more in your national champion until his dreams were shattered by a twist of fate what happened was an accident it wasn't your fault that's yeah, supposed to make me feel better but one man is willing to give him another chance. Alex, glad you can make it. For a price. My fighters are well paid and very well trained. I'd like you to join them. Become one of the best. And this is the Ring of Steel. That's Jack. Our club champion. He's very good. So far, he's the best. I think Alex could do better. Alex, welcome to the class. You're just in time for your first lesson. Now, number one, I decide who fights who and when. Number two, there's no fighting outside the Ring of Steel ever. And number three, inside the Ring of Steel, there are no rules. No! You can't make me fight. Alex! What have you done with Elena? There is a lot at stake here, isn't there? He's a dangerous man, Alex. Don't you ever disobey me again! Not ever do you understand me! Don't underestimate him or what he's asking you to do. You will fight who I say and when I say. You will last in the ring. We shall see. He's caught in a deadly game where the winners rule and the losers die. Robert Chapin, Gary Casper, Darlene Vogel. Death has just become a spectator sport. Ring of Steel. Hello, folks. It's another Sid Beef Podcast, Burnt Ends. But the the fancy part about this one is this one's going to be on your main feed because I'm, I'm hoping to turn it into something. And I, yeah. Um, if you listen, listen to the Beef and First Three episodes, uh, that guy, that other guy, we had a good time doing Crippled Theater, and I, I would hope so. And I wanted to dig into more of those things with him, so I, I, I brought him here. It's not like I'm twisting his arm ever, but Ricky Morgan, how you doing, sir? What's happening, man? Always glad to be back and hang out with my buddy. Yeah, man, me too. You know, what, what I like about what you bring is it, it's always a shock to me, right? Because, you know, I, I recently had Dave Z on my show, and I expected, you know, some horror flick, and he picked Neighbors, <laughs> you know. And that's the way I feel about it. every time I get with you. It's like it's going to be something that is never really talked about, and that's what I love about it, right? I, I love not having to do, you know, another Dawn of the Dead or, you know, what everybody else does. I, I like that you, you just bring something up that I'm like, never heard of it, let's give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have told you Dave Z loves neighbors. It's one of his favorite things. It did that um Yeah. We had him on the show one time, we did Jenny Dangerously and oh, that yeah. that's one of his favorite things too, so Oh well I didn't know that. Oh yeah. yeah I I'll have to I have to hit him up for that one then because we've talked about a couple of other ones, but yeah, I mean and and uh again, you know, even though we're all kind of horror fanatics, it, it all comes from somewhere else, right? There's these other movies that Maybe even lead you into horror, but we are '80s HBO kids, right? That's what kind of drives us to finding all these movies or Cinemax, whatever you had at the time, which easily would have been where the, you could have seen this movie in the in the time that it came out. <laughs> by by one forty-five, you know, in the morning, uh, right after you made some bad decisions with some friends, you know, <laughs> let's turn on this film about an underground fighting ring. Yeah, well, that's that's original. We're, we're, oh, oh boy, howdy it is though, because uh, 
<laughs> Wait till we get into it. Uh, yeah, the reason I want to do this for Ricky is um, to kind of restart but not replace our, our good friend Johnny Krug and watch something stupid and talk about it, you know, because um, Short Bus was a lot of fun, dude. You guys had great yeah. chemistry together, and yeah, uh, I, I miss that man so much. That was my I first, do, too. That was my first world podcast I ever listened to was Kruger Nation. Um, he, he was into it, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it was just it was the right thing, and <clears throat> you know it, it's you know yeah. I have those thoughts of I'd love to do a show and cover those kind of flicks, but you know that one was just special. I mean the the chemistry there just it worked so well, and uh, you know so I'm glad that you know you're trying to carry on something kind of in the spirit of that, and hey, let's roll, man. Well, the film I chose you know, for for this first time go around for this official unofficial thing. Uh, is is Ring of Steel for, from 1994? Uh, this is rated R. I have no idea. Well, well, you do see a boob in there. Yeah, so, so yeah. Very pretty, pretty uh, passionate uh, skin and max sex scene in this movie. But um, in case you don't know what this is, I, I will read the plot synopsis to you. A champion fencer accidentally kills an opponent in a match. Disgraced, he is blackballed from the fencing community until a mysterious stranger saves his life one night from a gang of muggers. He soon, find, soon finds himself caught up in a world of underground Ill illegal sword fights where combatants fight to the death sometimes. Uh, that, that, that part's not on there. Sometimes they do. This is directed by David Frost, who di didn't do a whole lot, uh, did a lot more producing. One of my favorite things on his list is he directed three episodes of, of Mass Rider, which is a, a thing called Common Rider in Japan, uh, which is where Power Rangers came from, basically. Right. And um, those those are really cool to watch. If you know what Common Rider is, go 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 check it out. I think they're all on on Tubi. I think. Wasn't he involved with the Death Stalker stuff too? I don't. I don't think so. I thought he was. I maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to look right now and tell you. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. thought maybe he directed one of them or something to that degree. The the, the magic of um this man, I guess. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't see that. Oh, maybe yeah. Deathstalker and the Warriors from Hell, supervising producer, 1988. Which I don't even uh, know. Producer. Which one, I don't even know what that one is. So <laughs> it's, I, it's best left unsolved. <laughs> I, I know. I know of Deathstalker one and two, and I prefer the second one of uh, those Deathstalker movies. Yeah. Although you do see, um, which which Jason was it Richard Brooker? You get to see an actual acting role in the first Deathstalker movie. I think it is. Yeah. Um, but this is uh, written by Robert P Robert Chapin and starring Robert Chapin, <laughs> uh, which I, th I think is a fascinating dude. Um, actually, yeah. he he had a pretty big big uh, life beyond beyond uh, acting. Um, but the stars, the 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 amazing Joe Don Baker, which which come to work for is Joe Don Baker. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's why I showed up. I was like, Joe Don Baker, I'm in. Uh, Carol Alt, who um, is a swimsuit model, who who, who who turned into an actress. Um, I know her most from watching wrestling, and then Thunder in Paradise would come on the TV show <laughs> with Hulk Hogan in a boat, and uh, she she was uh, she was the eye candy on that show. Uh, uh, Darlene Vogel, who, who as as Elena Carter, who you may know as. Um, like punk number three, the girl punk from Back to the Future Two. She, she was in that movie, but yeah. didn't didn't do a whole lot past that. Um, genre favorite Don Stark plays a cop in this movie. Um, you may know him from <laughs> Evil Speak and ton and, and tons of other stuff. But uh, Bob from that '70s Bob. show, yes. Don't forget Switchblade Sister. And He's Switchblade, in... he does do, he does do some great genre stuff. He does. Yeah. Um. But this stars Robert Chapin, who plays our, our lead character, who's not even listed on the on these top cast credits. Oh, here it is, Alex Alex Fryer, is is the guy uh, in question who who kills somebody, you know. And you see you see a telegraph a mile away, because film starts, um, in a fencing tournament, and you know you know after, you know the 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 adventurous soundtrack that ensues in this movie all over the place, like like they're going swashbuckling. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I mean <laughs> you're right. I mean this movie just changes its mind what it wants to be every you know 45 seconds or so. So <laughs> it's like insert saxophone interlude here, right? And then insert the swashbuckling music back in here again, and then insert the Casio keyboard soundtrack. You know? Right. 
And of course, he's, you know, he's Mr. Joe Cool. He's trying to hit on this girl, and he's trying to show how smart he is. And then, of course, she lets you know who he is, right? He's third-time world champion, fencer, yada, yada, you know. And he's like, hey, uh, can I hit you up for a cup of coffee later on? Because we know what that, what that means, right? So. <laughs> I mean, sex with sex, my phony music brother, you know. Right. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, like you said, you know, he, he gets in this fencing tournament and he gets up there and accidentally kills the guy or was it accidental? Well, we you see, know. yeah, you see the, you see the tip of the sword, you know, cause they're, they're fencing, you know, in, in competition. So the, 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 the very sharp tip of the sword is covered, mm-hmm. but that breaks off. He stabs the guy in the eye hilariously cause you know, he hit it right in the right spot. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be an Italian movie cause he he hit the eye trauma right away, and apparently you bleed out with that because I, I he didn't uh, I I don't know. It's been the instant. <laughs> it's, impo- it's it's integral to the plot of the movie, you know. So I'll give him that. Um, so, so yeah, he he's down and out, and um, he he after after sex or before or after sex, I forget one because there's a you know. They, they I think get, this is before he hadn't quite hit it yet. This is so. pre, this is pre coitus because apparently yeah. this guy gets him really excited. He's get, he's getting mugged in in in, a, in an alley, and he beats uh, the, the the man that he's called Man in Black in the credits. Uh, <laughs> our man Joe Don Baker, yeah, who, who is was, also at the tournament. Is oh you, yeah, you don't you don't get to see him. You just see his hand and like a cane, right? So you know that somebody set this up for this accident to happen, supposedly. Very, very, uh, very studious, you know, with, uh, letting you know something's going down. I missed that, actually. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. But Joe Don Baker shows up in a hat and I think a cape or a duster, yeah. perhaps. I don't know. But he... What is? He, but, what does he say? Something when he gets out of the car? It's like, uh, I mean, can I not, you know, you don't have any prospectors here? Or, you know? <laughs> something like that. But he, he, yeah. pull, he pulls out a, a sword out of this cane. <laughs> You know what? Him in this hat and this this duster, you kind of believe that shit for some reason. Yeah, I don't know sure. why. You know? <laughs> yeah, and you know you get these thugs. They're they're trying to beat up our main character, who's who's really kind of down and out, right? Because he's accidentally killed somebody. He hasn't really quite got over it, even though emotionally he doesn't really show it. But when he talks to the girl, it's like, how am I supposed to just get over that? Well, you know, she's trying. You know, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, so he's emotionally distraught, and he gets mugged. Joe Don Baker shows up and shows out, and then you get, uh, hey, uh, if you ever need anything, look me up. And he gives him this card that says, Circle of Steel. <laughs> Ring, of, Ring of Steel. <laughs> and then our, our hero joins the Men in Black, you know. Yeah. Man, oh, man. That's that's the end of the movie, by the way. He enjoys the Men in Black, but no, it's not the end of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what do I do next? I'm a professional sword fighter. You know, how about to get a job, buddy? You know, but no. I know. Why don't I just go upstairs and have sex with this woman that I just met a little while ago? You know, she's into it though. So she's, sure. Uh, oh yeah. I guess it's consensual. Yeah. <laughs> well, like you said, you got the the Cinemax saxophone going on. You got the the light, uh, real light blue lighting going on. Yeah, man, it's happening. You know, just so you can see some nip, but not a lot of nip, you know, because this is why this is rated R, and um, this is this is I guess w- what you come for, but not really. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's I mean, you know, it's gonna happen because it's just a requirement in these kind of movies, but it's really not what you show up for. What you show up for is Joe Don Baker acting like Joe Don King. Yes. <laughs> that should have been his temporary name for this movie, Joe Don I King. Don't... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is right, right in the action of '94, where, where uh, the old, old um, Don King was doing his thing, you know, mm-hmm. making all stupid money with the boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you've got an underground tournament of people sword fighting. So you so you're basically taking Enter the Dragon and blood sport and fencing. <laughs> Can't forget fencing. It's very important to the plot, you know. <laughs> and, and this is this is what you get. I mean, it's a it's an underground kumite with swords, you know. <laughs> or some for sometimes. Well, well, one guy that we'll talk about, you know, who's their champion, uh, yeah. Jack, played by Gary Casper in this movie, who's who's done, 
who's worked quite mm. a bit. He still works today. He was, he was just on Supergirl not long ago. So oh, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the the the, the tough man, the, the the champion of the Ring of Steel. So he's all he's all in, you know, for killing people and yeah. destroying them at any 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 spot. And he's got a buddy he makes because he's just as big of a dandy as he is. Uh, Brian, played by Jim Peary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, their fight is spectacular, but yeah, it, what the, what differs this from other tournament fighting movies is like the stupidity. But you're really <laughs> all in to what's going on here because it <laughs> you you have one fight where it's like a brutal, like you know ki- you know high kicking like martial arts with a sword and a, and a, and a and a shield moment. Yeah, and then you have Alex and Brian's fight. <laughs> Which is this big old pirate musical thing, <laughs> where, where where Brian's jumping into the crowd like taking drinks from women and stuff like that, and yeah, it's, showboat um, man, he's yeah, showboating, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's of course th- that's that setup too that you get from well, Enter the Dragon, Mortal Kombat. Any, take your pick of any tournament movie, where you and another guy become pals, but eventually you're going to have to fight each other, right? Same thing in Kill or Be Killed. It, like I said, pick a tournament movie. This is going to happen. You're going to end up having to fight one of your buddies, and they're going to force you, oh, need to fight to the death. Oh, these other fights, it didn't matter, but this one you got to fight to the death, you know, so. But they don't really fight to the death, so. Because <laughs> in, in their fights, they're more headed for, you know, the, the, the theatrics and the entertainment. and Right. You know, with this crowd of people, I have to mention this is this is your classic. You know, man, the man in black, Joe Don Baker, has a a dance club w- with uh, the elevator that goes all the way down to go fight this 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 tournament ring. And the, the people that are watching this, you know, they think they'd be out for blood, but they're really into this these two dandies fighting each other with with a sword and puppy shirts. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. It was like they went back and captured some pirates and said, "All right, let's put them in the ring. Let them go." And, uh, you know, uh, the other guy is probably my favorite character in the whole movie because he's he's having fun, right? He set up the whole thing where Jack is supposed to uh, is supposed to fight and he sends the chicken out there instead. And, you know, there, there's there's a lot of fun stuff like that that happens in this, too. And again, like I said, that creates that friendship between our main character and him. And eventually you got to bring that to a halt, right? Because Joe Don King Baker can't have that. He's got to control everything, including which is a, a goofy aspect I love about this movie. You know, to to keep Alex, our, our hero, into the tournament, he, he kidnaps his girl for no reason and, and puts her up in the penthouse. You know, yeah, he could have just paid him like a lot of money, and he would have just probably stayed. You know, <laughs> but no, we we got to take uh, we got to do it by force. You know, because that's that's the kind of people we are here. So see, see in other in other fighting movies like this, she should have been possibly sexually assaulted or tied to a chair or something. Right. No, she's just living it up in Carol Alt's apartment, you know. Yeah, and, uh, she's just hanging out, wants to order some Chinese food, you know. <laughs> even, like, when they meet each other, she's like, I'm not in that much distress, actually. I'm kind of having a good time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, when are we going to get in this mess with this fighting stuff? He says, two more matches. Sure you do, guy. Sure you do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, of course... When it when it's all said and done, I mean, and that's the thing. Joe Don Baker is pretty much playing all these guys, right? And what he says goes. Um, and the rules for this are kind of like Fight Club. I mean, there are no rules. <laughs> he basically tells them that. Yeah, there's there's no rules to this. You're you're in there and you you fight to to win and you fight to the other one ceases and you know and in some cases it's going to be to the death and that's kind of how this thing rolls and. Obviously, when you see them teamed up and who they're fighting each other, you know if it's going to be, you know, to the death or not. And, uh, the, of course, Jake, Jack, uh, can't stand him because he's the he's the main guy, right? Nobody takes my spot. So you've got that, that bad blood already there. And that gets escalated as we go along. So, so uh, you know, Jack wants to be Joe Don Baker's number one man, which he is. But he wants to stay there. He doesn't want this new guy cutting in on his action, and uh, it just it just goes bonkers, man. I mean, till you lead up to you know it's going to be the the big fight between those two, but they don't really stay in the ring. 
No, they they got to they get out of the ring and go go fight. Uh, once once the building catches on fire and fight in the flaming building. And um, it, it's one of those things where everything happens at the right time, right? Because the cops show up, they start busting the place, they're trying to arrest everybody, but. You know, Jack's got dude's girlfriend by the neck, and he's taking off with her, and, you, and he's take, chasing after him. And then they go to this other part of the building, and it ends up being, I don't know, where they're making metal or something. I don't know, because there's a lot of fire and lava, and <laughs> it's like the, the, there's, that's that's the sword smelt right there. I'm sure the the, the deleted scene that we did not see, you know. <laughs> it just happens to be attached to this nightclub that has a fighting ring underneath it. So uh, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe Joe Don Baker, his character, the man in black, had a little more action going on than just did this. He just did this stuff for fun. His real money was the the metal plant next door. <laughs> well, you know, you, you had to make those uh, those fancy swords which you claim belonged to Charles II and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, he's got the collection to try to woo our hero into the, hey, this is this is how cool what you're getting involved in is. It's not just killing people. It's hey, we get these cool swords. You could use my fancy, uh, you know, swords from the from the 18th century, which you know, if you're gonna have guys killing each other, you know, fighting to the death, why would you let me use like these priceless yeah. swords? I have no yeah. idea. It yeah. just, um, um, my you favorite. Gotta, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this is, you're gonna ruin the swords, man. You're you, gonna ruin the swords. Yeah, use this fifteen dollar one that I just made. You know, I, I, I will say, you know. One guy in this movie had a pretty fascinating career besides Joe Don Baker. Is the big guy the, the front, that comes in from the Renaissance Fair to be a sword fighter in this one scene? <laughs> uh, Travis McKenna is the actor's name, and he's been all, all over the spectrum <laughs> in, in, in genre stuff. Um, he, he played the the, the, the the clown, the fatter clown character in Batman Returns. He, he was um, in Roadhouse. He played the big hairy guy yep. in Roadhouse. Uh, yep. Well, Twice Dead, which is a, a fun horror film that's pretty stupid. That's on my list to do. Cheerleader Camp, which is a fun, stupid fun horror film to do. Um, hamburger yeah. the Motion Picture, people. Come on. You know. oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, he's he's in some stuff. Um, <laughs> and, but that, that, that guy, he, he makes the mistake of saying, well, I'm just going to go fucking tell all about this place in a room, <laughs> yeah. full, in a room full of tough guys. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't go over very well. After he gets his butt kicked because he thinks he can compete with these guys that are real swordsmen against a guy that pretends <laughs> to be a swordsman. He yeah, gets, it's quite he gets, comical. He gets spanked by it, that. To that, put it in, in perspective, it, if you watch any of the Cobra Kai stuff, he's basically Stingray, except Stingray is a lot much, much much cooler than this guy is. <laughs> he gets spanked by, by, our, by our Jack, our, our, our foil in this movie. With this, I'm guessing like bamboo sword yeah. or something. It's practice and swords, yeah. So it had to hurt like a motherfucker. Oh you yeah, know? yeah. Just... Those things still hurt, yeah. And then, then here comes Alex again. Our hero ruining his good time. You know, just more yeah. of a reason to want to kill Alex and um, right. just building that tension. Mm. Which is one thing this movie does well is building the tension between those two because <laughs> he's just taking away Jack's sort of thirst for blood there, and he, he does. Uh, Jack don't like that man. Right. Yeah, and that's again that's. That's the setup, right? There's – for the most of the story, it's pretty predictable, right? Because like I said, we've had all the tournament movies, and it's pretty much the same setup. It's just got some weird little quirky things that happen in it that really sets it apart. And the fact you got Joe Don Baker here that's supposed to be the puppet master of all of it, yeah, that's, that's, that's what makes it kind of unique. But the story is the story, and by the end of it, instead of it being like this big – sword fight thing at the end, which you still kind of get, it almost becomes more Errol Flynn. It becomes more swashbuckling for some reason. And then it turns into Die Hard. <laughs> I mean, that goes to our star here, who was also the, 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 the writer of this movie, Robert Chapin, who, if you read into his, his career, um, b before this, he was like, like a professional, like Renaissance fair person. They, they had like a jousting team and everything, so huh. so he he was all in with the sword fighting stuff. So if anything, it, it's it's choreographed very well, and, yeah. And I think he had a lot to do with that. Yeah, probably so. Because you could watch a film where guys are swinging swords at each other; it can be real sloppy. 
this this looked like it had some thought behind it that the fight scenes with, with the sure. swords. Yeah, well, I mean that's that's probably where they spent the money, right? Because the rest of it's just the the typical tournament setup. Not near as many people as in in a normal tournament type movie, um, but at the same time, uh, these guys do a pretty good job with with handling the swords and and the choreograph choreography, like you said. Um, but yeah, when you get to the the big finale, it's just kind of. It, it, it changes gears a few times because they fight on that kind of catwalk suspended, you know, walkway that they've got over the flames that are burning for some reason in this building. Yeah, it's on fire <laughs> for sure. You know. So they're fighting, and then he he kicks Jack off of there, and you think, okay, he fell to his death. Which I mean, it's a long ways down. It's like a good what thirty, forty foot drop. <laughs> then you think, okay, he fell in the flames. He's dead. Well, no. So now the flames are getting higher for some reason. So we've got to do a swashbuckling Luke Skywalker, you know, wrap my 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 belt around this cable, and we're going to slide down it to the other side, go on top of the roof. Guess who was there? That's right, Jack. Jack's still alive. The the, the hemorrhoid that won't go away is still alive on this. Jack roof. is back, yeah. baby. Which is and, uh, which is a great great part of that movie. You know, she goes. Something about, didn't you always want to be a pirate or something? Because I've known you for like five minutes. And, you know, <laughs> he wraps that chain around that cable, and it looks good, the slide yeah. down the cable with, with the chain, you know. Yeah, yeah it works. And, and, and that's what I mean. Everything works in this movie. It's it's almost not <clears> – you can tell it wasn't intended to be a bad movie, which no real bad movie is intended to be a bad movie. It just turns out that way. But uh, it, it's it's a solid flick, and – but it's just got these quirky things. Like I said, you you get the the big finale fight scene, I guess, on the roof of the building, and the cops, everybody are down at the bottom looking up and seeing what's going on, and then all of a sudden, things change gear, and the building's going to explode for some reason, and they jump off like it's diehard and land on a you know they got a, a catching platform there for them, I, you know that. How did they know those people were going to be on the roof and were going to jump off and have well, that thing blown up in time? You well, know. Well, the cops were there and the 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 the, the fire was was flaming. So I'd imagine the firefighters would have had something for them to either climb on or jump down on. I don't know what what the budget was for their giant poofy, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, inflatable thing. But it's, I, it's, a, it's a legit one. I mean, it's one that they kind of use. You know. So I'd imagine you know that that. The firefighters knew there there'd be folks here you know, trying to get out, you know, through windows or whatnot. And so I'll yeah. give I'll give them the placement of this giant poofy uh, air air thing, you know. <laughs> but what happens before this is spectacular because one of the rules uh, the Man in Black has is nobody fights outside the Ring of Steel. So he finally shows up at the end of this movie, sticks his, his sword cane through Jack, and and says, "I told you, I don't fight outside the Ring of Steel," <laughs> you know. So he's he's living by his convictions and yeah. and he wants he wants Alex to be his champion and Alex isn't going for it of course. So one of the biggest baller moves of this movie is like I know a way out. He walks through the door and then the flames shoot up behind him like he's the devil. It's it's <laughs> it's a great shot of this movie, you know. And then you know after after the building is burnt down and stuff, you get that Flash Gordon ending, right? Yes. <laughs> the sequel that never showed up because out of the ashes, you see this this rapier or longsword or something, and somebody's hand, somebody glo- somebody's gloved hand picks it up. It's like, yep, we're talking the sequel to Ring of Steel, and you know what? Uh-huh. I probably would have been there for it. I'm not gonna lie to you, you know. <laughs> Rings of Steel. Rings of Steel. The, the follow up. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I probably would have been there for it. I'm not gonna lie to you. It, it, it's. I, I can't say this is like high class cinema, but I, no. I did I did I did enjoy my time with it because yeah, because it's, it's, when I said we're gonna do this, Ricky, I said I, what, what what is it? I think it's definitely unique. You know what yeah. it, it was for this kind of movie. You know, it's it's taking something that you've seen several times and it's and it's pretty predictable, but at the same time, like I said, it just it does these little things that just make you go, okay, all right, I'll give you that. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, this is like made. I guess like post those kind of movies, and sorry if uh, my cat's right. making noise. She she's in the room with me. Um, <laughs> I'll blame it on Duchess in post production. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, this is this is made a bunch of times. You can watch like Death Warrant and like Lionheart or you know pick pick your Jean Claude Van Damme uh, Turner movie, right. uh, The Quest, Kickboxer, Bloodsport. Um, yep. no, there's there's more than that. King of the Kickboxers. They they, they made a bunch of these in the '90s yep. and late '80s. But this this is like on the back end of those, and mm-hmm. I, I think that that. The, this guy's passion for 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 sword play and and, and Renaissance shit, it, it sort of translated well to this kind of movie, but it it didn't go all in, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it, it it went all in enough for me to say, hey, I I enjoy my time with it, and I'm I'm the, I'm all there for the Joe Don Baker, the rise of 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 the man in black. To, uh, <laughs> to, you kind of have to give you have to give credit to the cast here because. If 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 the cast wasn't solid enough, this could have been a very low grade movie, you know. So you kind of have to hand it to that. It's 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 a solid group. It's like you did um, Masters with uh with our friend mm-hmm. Dan Bone, and one major fascinating thing I found out about it was the reason why the sword play looked sort of decent is because the guy that played Blade was a uh, like a professional horse master and swords master. You know, you yeah. didn't see a lot of lot. You didn't see a lot of horse play in that movie. And I don't mean you like the goofy stuff, but like any horses at all in that movie. But the fact this guy had some kind of tutelage, you know, in that sense, sense kind of, I'm sure made those scenes a little bit better. I'm sure. True. I'm sure he helped out with that. And um, yeah, this guy, yeah, absolutely. This, this guy being what he was, you know, I I, I think that it, it had to make this movie better than it would have been. And and it's also a look at. The different the different styles of fighting too, especially with the sword, because you got the the samurai sword, you've got the the swashbuckling thing, you've got the the strict fencing, you know, approach too that you have. So it's it's almost that <clears throat> the whole idea of what Bruce Lee was doing with Enter the Dragon was ex- exposing all the different styles, and the best style is the 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 culmination of all of them together into one style. You know, you're kind of still getting that thing, even though it's not heavy handed in it. You still see it because when when Alex first gets in there and starts fighting, Joe Don Baker says, "Hey, just just do what you do. Don't don't try to change your style. Do what you know works for you in the fencing world." And when he starts doing that, then obviously it starts working for him. So, yeah, you kind of get that that spin on it as well. I I have to mention this because I look for him this time around. Um, Judo Jean Labelle, the, the 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 legendary, you know, fighter and trainer. Who, who trained uh, many many people for for anywhere from from Roddy Roddy Piper to 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 Rowdy Ronda Rousey to to so many people. Um, he shows up in this movie as some kind of bodyguard or something. Um, yeah. If you don't know who Judo Judo Jean LaBelle is, this guy was stretching people into his eighties, and he's a real was a real tough dude. I think real deal. Just, I think yep. he just died like last year, which is um, he lived a good life. So there's yeah. there's that and um. That's pretty cool. It's it's like when Frank Dukes uh, shows up in Highlander for no reason. Like, hey, that's Frank Dukes in the car, you know. Uh, back to the tournament action of the movies, but I thought that was a nice touch to throw a, a true blue, you know, tough guy in this movie. You know, just right. kind of slum it in this movie, if you if you will. But but I I I have to ask you uh, any final thoughts um, that you have on this movie, and um, what what would you give it one to ten? One to ten. I'll probably give this a six. That's it's it's a little better than just average to me. I mean it's 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 it is entertaining. Um, even though, like I said, it's very predictable, and I think that's the only thing that kind of keeps it from getting any higher. And it does kind of ramp things up towards the end. You knew that somebody was going to come up and stab Jake, but you just weren't for sure who it was going to be. So when it happens and you see his Joe Don Baker, you're like, all right, I'll take that, right? Because he's Joe King. I mean, Joe King, <laughs> Don King, <laughs> you know, that's that's his character in this. And nobody's going to mess up his game. You're just the parts that play in the in the game. He's running this thing. He'll kill you if he has to. And I think that's really what drives this thing more than anything else. And the fact that, you know, would he actually let Alex go? That's where you need the part two. Right. So I don't know. It, it's I'd say it's a six. Yeah, I'm right there with you with that six. It's it's it's, it's better than that. It's better than you know, middle of the road. I I um, I had I had a good time with it, you know, and and not like in an ironic way. I mean, I, I love goofy films like this, and this one it was not your average, you know, k- kick and punch. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rape your girl, 
hell, they put up in a nice apartment, you know, for Christ's sake. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like, dude, we're, we're not going to hurt your girl. We're just going to put her up for a while. You know, yeah. Just, just to keep her, you at her at arm's length. And so, so you'll fight for me, you know? And, uh, it's just, um, yeah. Cause he was really excited about doing this whole thing, this whole ring of steel thing. Right. Even, even after the almost murder that happens in the opening fight scene. It, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, six out of ten. I, I I recommend it. I want to say, and I'm gonna look right now, real fast, while we're recording this. I should do this before. This might be on YouTube. I, I, we, I it's watched on YouTube. It. That's yeah. where I watched it. I watched it on our friend's uh, video service. He has it on there. But you can find this on YouTube, and um, yep. I recommend going to check it out because it's it's that kind of you know early '90s leftover from the late '80s action movie. That's it's got a unique tinge to it, and um. Yeah, check it out, man. Um, sure enough. I don't know how often we're gonna do these. I, I, I would hope. I would hope I get together Ricky at least a couple weeks. Every couple weeks, uh, do do we want to do one of these or however. Give often, it a shot. However, however often he wants to do these, because I'm, yeah. I'm 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 always down. But I'm gonna let him pick the next one, which you don't know what that's gonna be yet. But we'll we'll let you guys know. <laughs> um, some something uh something he he'll he'll discover I'm sure or something he's been jonesing to do on a show <laughs> like this and. But um, what you got coming up, man? You're you're always rolling, uh, you know, in your car, uh, re- re- recording uh, episodes of Doctor Movie. Um, what what yeah. what what fun greatness is coming up on that, brother? Well, uh, as far as Doctor Movie goes, uh, of course it depends on when this one actually comes out. But I just finished. Uh, I've got a whole week that's going to be called Bat Crap Crazy, which is just a, a group of five movies that are very very hard to even explain uh which is like demon wind <laughs> the visitor uh shocking dark boxer's omen and then uh court Sayoff's joins me joins me and we do uh, uh phenomena together and uh outside of that i'm looking at the entire list of movies that are considered the demons i call it the demon saga right because it's not really a series it's just a group of movies that people decided, hey, these first two are really popular. We'll just call this part three, and people will go see it because the other ones are so popular. And that just got way out of hand, and you got all the way down to ten movies, even though there's actually 15 movies? <laughs> Something like that? Uh, there's I, three part threes. That's the problem. You know? I, I rewatched Demons 2 recently because I, I love I love the the whole switch of that from the from the first one and I I come to realize I don't know if you talk about this or not that the 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 girl in Demons 2 becomes the initial demon mm-hmm. they, all those folks had the reason to die because they they played the classic age old tale of we have relatives over. And they don't fucking leave your house at the time you want them to leave. <laughs> yeah. She, yeah. she didn't want those people in her apartment. And you know nope. what? They, they, time they, to go. They died yep. for that reason. So if you're that person <laughs> that sticks around till 11 o'clock at night at a house party, I mean, the, the, the company, your company, and they want you to go home, your host right. might turn into a demon and kill you. Just think about that next time, okay? You know? <laughs> uh, and the, the thing about Dr. Movie is it's it's genre free i mean i'm 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 jumping from that to old classic exploitation flicks uh you know i just did vanishing point and then the next movie was battle beyond the stars so i mean it's it's all over the place just like me and uh so that's going on hell mean we're still going it's just hard to get together and do anything we're supposed to be doing logan's run really soon and uh, it's just kind of hard for Danny and I to get together, and he's he's got a lot going on, so, you know, we'll get it when we get it. Well, I can't wait to hear you talk about Jenny Agater and, and Bot. okay? I can't wait to hear about this, uh, you know. I've been talking about Jenny a lot here lately. She's been in two or three movies that's just popped up recently on Dr. Movie, and I'm like, wow, she just keeps showing up, and that's not a bad thing. I, I've never seen Walkabout, but she's naked throughout most of it, so maybe I should fix that problem, you know. Do you ever see Equus? No. Oh man! This is a horse. It's like a horse thing or something. Man, you want to talk about a messed up movie? It's based on a play. <laughs> okay. That movie is messed up, man. Uh, yeah. Equus, you know. I want to say I want to I want to say I would recommend it, but it's a one time watch. You yeah. probably won't ever want to watch it again. It's not because it's bad, just because it's like you just kind of have to shake it off. <laughs> you know. It's, it's so bizarre. You know, that's what I love. A, I love doing about shows with you is that. You'd never been about just horror films, and I always told yeah. folks, you know, I, I admire my friends that do just horror podcasts, 
but I might hang myself in the bathroom if I had to stick to one genre, and I, I can never yeah. do that. You know, can't do it. Can't do it. I mean, you know, the, there's many sides to all of us. This is just like music. I mean, you can't just like. I mean, we 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 gravitate towards one style of music, but it's all influential. It all affects each other, you know, and it's all building blocks. And I I love how things go together, right? It's just like you recognize people, even in you know. Going back to you know Bob from this one that was in uh, Switchblade Sisters. I mean it's uh, it's all relative, and I, you know there's no reason you can't like you know steak and cheesecake. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I, I always tell folks that Three Ninjas Knuckle Up is one of the greatest genre casts. That should have been a genre cast ever, because because Don Stark is in that too. Uh, <laughs> with Charles Napier and a couple other folks that you see in genre stuff, like, I'm like, wow, who's in this movie again? You know, right. that's wild. <laughs> you know, that's really wild. But, um, yeah, we'll end this out here. We'll, uh, we're going to hang up our puffy shirts for the day and our, our, uh, our, our fancy pirate swords. And we'll see you all again next time. Hopefully real soon with, a another, um, another burnt ends episode where we, we might call something else later, but for right now it's, it's a, it's a free burnt ends episode on, on the Legion <laughs> feed. The other ones are on Patreon, obviously. So if you haven't done that, 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 uh, go, that, go, go, uh, spend your two bucks a month and go support our great, our great, uh, group of entrepreneurs there or a great, uh, group of creators at, um, Legion, uh, patreon.com slash Legion podcast, please. Yeah. Um, 